today's proverb is, no matter how full the river is, it still wants to grow. That is a Congolese proverb. Today's episode is brought to you by Black Wall Street, the board game, and Play Black Wall Street Academy. This site supports the education of financial literacy for black families. Visit playblackwallstreet.com and use the discount code CLEVERLY, that's C, capital C-L-E-V-E-R-L-Y, all caps, for 25% off site-wide. The discount cannot be combined with any other discounts. Today's word of the day is asante, and it means thank you in Swahili. What do you know about World Sickle Cell Day? Um, I know that it's on June 19th, and that's pretty much it. What do you think it's for? People with sickle cell. Do you think it's just for people with sickle cell or should it be celebrated by everybody? I think it should be celebrated by by more than just people with sickle cell, but I don't, I don't really know. Why, why do you think it's important for other people to celebrate it too? To spread awareness about it. Right, so the day is about bringing awareness to the disease and... So that, like, big companies that have, like, science, that are, like, sciencey and stuff, they could possibly find another cure for it? Perhaps, yes. Can you tell us what sickle cell disease is? Can you tell other kids what it is? It's a disease where it turns your blood cells in a C or sickle shape, shapes, uh, that's how it gets its name. And um, you can get um, a pain crisis if you don't drink enough water. Yeah. A pain crisis can come from other things besides just not drinking enough water. Do well, you yeah. know what other ways a person can what other things can make a person susceptible to getting a pain crisis? I don't know much. Um, being in the heat for too long, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, temperatures that are too cold or too hot. So extreme temperatures? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's anything else besides um, dehydration? No. No. What about stress? Nah. Yeah, stress can also cause a pain crisis as well. Oh. So have you ever experienced a pain crisis? Yeah, once. Do you remember how it felt? It just hurt a lot, and I couldn't really move. How old were you? Like four. Five? I'm not, I don't remember. You were five. And since then, you've had very small pain, bouts of pain, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you can remember those more frequently. But what happened with that? I just had to drink a bunch of water. And rest because Mm -hmm. if you don't get a lot, if you don't get enough rest, you can also have a pain crisis, right? Mm Mm-hmm. All right. So can you kind of talk about maybe how things are a little bit different for you since you've been growing up with sickle cell? I just have to drink a bunch of water, like more water, and make sure I'm not in too extreme of temperatures so I don't get a pain crisis. But that's pretty much the only thing that's changed. Sometimes are you sleepy? Do you think more than normal? Nah. 
No, not really. No. So you have a lot of energy. Yeah. Okay. So how would you... What else would you like to tell our audience about sickle cell disease? So my mom wrote a book about sickle cell, and I think you should read it. It's really good, and it's a coloring book, so it's a fun activity. What is the book about? Can you kind of describe it in more detail? It's called The ABCs of Sickle Cell. It's a coloring book for kids, and it teaches people about sickle cell, and it's not only for kids, it's for adults as well. What do you like? Was there a drawing or an alphabet that you like the most? An alphabet? You mean a letter? Um, no, not really. So you don't have a favorite illustration in the book? No. Nah. Have you helped your mom with the book at all? Uh, not much. I mean, I colored a page in. So you colored a page and you helped your mom make a video to advertise it. And so if people want to see the video, they have to go to the show notes page, right? Yeah. Okay. You're so saying... is there anything you want to tell people about celebrating Rural Sickle Cell Day? Um, no, just go. If it wasn't quarantine, you, sh you could go on a sickle cell walk. Have you ever been on a sickle cell walk? Once. Was it fun? It was hot and annoying because we were walking for like a four hours. So we did a 5K in a sickle cell walk and it was in DC and it was on the National Mall. And it was hot, but it was fun because you were with other people and you were walking for the same cause. Sure, I guess. All right. So thanks for talking to us about sickle cell. You're welcome. All right. Welcome to another Cleverly Changing Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Elle, and this is episode 35. I apologize because it has been a little while since you have listened to us, but in the midst of the pandemic, life has gotten a little bit busy and some things have come up, but I want you to know that whenever you don't hear from us, you can always check out our pages because we always have something new going on. I have done several Mondays live with historian and author, Dr. Janice Adams, as well as different lives on my Instagram, as well as on Facebook. So those are two places where you can follow Cleverly Changing and check out the latest information about what's new and hot topics and current events. So definitely tune in and listen up. I am a mom to twins. I'm an entrepreneur. And the Cleverly Changing podcast is not just for people who homeschool, but it is for all parents who want to supplement their child's education. The goal of the podcast is to help educate Black families to feel supported in our journey to educate our kids so that they will know who they are and where they come from. So I want to go ahead and jump into today's conversation. But before I do that, I would like to um, let you know that it is our sponsors and supporters that really keep this po podcast going. And if you would like to be a supporter, you can sign up on our Patreon page, and that's patreon.com slash cleverly changing to donate. We have three different tiers where you can donate monthly to keep this podcast going. And we want you to know that we love what we do, but we need your support in order to keep it going. All right. So I said I was looking forward to this conversation and I am. 
Why? Because this is our Juneteenth conversation. So Juneteenth was actually the day that slaves were freed in Texas. It happened two years on June 19th, 19, 18, I'm sorry, June 19th, 1865, where the slaves in Galveston, Texas were freed. What's amazing about Juneteenth is that in every city, southern city, slaves were freed differently. So I want you to just sit and imagine with me for a little bit being a slave out in the cotton fields and on the plantations. In North Carolina, those plantations were tobacco farms. In Texas, they had a variety of crops. I know one of those crops um, that people work in Alabama, it was also cotton. And in different parts of the US, there were different cash crops where people who were enslaved were working out in the fields. And you and I both know that education was something that was not easily attainable. And so those slaves were not aware. It's not like they had social media like we do now where what goes on in the news is broadcast any and everywhere throughout the day. Well, that wasn't the case. In Texas in 1865, there was a Union soldier who rode into Texas with 2,000 men and he had to read the declaration and let them know that Lincoln had freed the slaves in the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, which was two years prior. The slaves, if you can imagine, were shocked because during that time they had still been struggling and fighting and trying to get freedom. Whereas on the eastern side of the United States in the south, those slaves, many of them were already free. Like in North Carolina, slaves were freed um, on March. Um, in North Carolina, they were freed earlier. In um, Virginia, they were freed about a year earlier on March 3rd. The slaves in Maryland were freed November 1st, 1864, which was already kind of late. But in Texas, they were the f most, they were the furthest away from the governing powers and the information about the Emancipation Proclamation hadn't reached their cities and communities yet. And so the slaves who could not read, there was no way for them to know that they were free. And so on June 19th, 1865, their worlds changed forever. They were released. They were able to pack up and leave. But what I find interesting about Juneteenth and the day that we celebrate is that after Lincoln passed the Emancipation Proclamation, life did not get easier for the people who were enslaved. In many ways, life actually got harder. What do I mean? After the slaves were freed, quote unquote, there were laws that were placed in different cities called black codes. And it restricted movements, it restricted places. And so Juneteenth, the reason why people don't know about it widely and why it comes into light after many years of struggle, this isn't the first time we're seeing a revitalization of Juneteenth. After Rodney King was be beaten in the 19. 90s, there was also a resurgence of celebrating Juneteenth. And back then in the 1860s, 
The people who were once enslaved celebrated Juneteenth in their homes away from others. And it was something that they really took to heart. And so in the 1980s, it became popular in Texas to celebrate Juneteenth. And so now we again are seeing that resurgence and celebrating Juneteenth. So while Juneteenth isn't the day when all slaves in the U.S., the Southern part and the Confederate States were freed, it is the time when the last slaves in the Confederate were freed. And that is definitely a moment to celebrate. But I think when we're dealing with our children, we have to be clear about the history. The Emancipation Proclamation was passed in 1863 on January 1st by Abraham Lincoln. That was also before the Civil War had actually ended. So people need to understand that the Emancipation Proclamation was passed before the Confederates had actually lost the Civil War. So that's just something to to keep in mind and do your research, learn about it, encourage your kids to do their research. Because I feel like if we know what's going on, we can do a better job about helping our kids feel confident about their past, their history, and their present. And we don't want to live in a world where our kids feel like they're inferior because they're not. And if you look at the history in the United States to know that in the 1860s, black people here in America, most of them were enslaved. Not all, but many of them were enslaved. When we think of that and we think of the 1920s, we talked about Greenwood and Black Wall Street in episode 34. That's not that long in between. That's not even a hundred years. So very quickly, people of African descent began to make a way for themselves, get education and really change their outcome. And I find that to be phenomenal. And so even though they had spent many, many hundreds of years oppressed, they were able to still rise above that and overcome. And so it's important to let your kids read books that tell them about their history. So there is a book called Black Wall Street and we encourage you to read it with your kids and discuss it, discuss the things and the events that have happened here in America. And I also want people to realize that in the United States, black people have been fighting for equality since they arrived. And that history and the legacy that continues to exist is one where we are still fighting. And when you look at the incarceration rates. I encourage you guys to watch 13th and you learn how the prison system is a whole business with cheap labor and a lot of injustice and inequity. Unfortunately, we have learned that there are people in prison who don't deserve to be there. They did not receive fair trials. They did not receive equal representation and adequate representation. And so when we look at the system here in America, there are some things that are fundamentally wrong within the United States that need to be changed, that need to be revitalized. But for the sake of this podcast, it is all about educating us and encouraging us to study and learn more. So in doing so, 
I wanted to also talk about World Sickle Cell Day. So June 19th is not just Juneteenth, it is also World Sickle Cell Day. And in an earlier podcast, I don't recall which one, I discussed that one of the reasons why I'm homeschooling is because I am parenting a child with sickle cell disease as well as type 1 diabetes. And so with June 19th being World Sickle Cell Day, I wanted to take the opportunity to educate my audience about sickle cell disease. So sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder. It is passed down from both parents. So with each parent, a child inherits 23 chromosomes and they, for children with sickle cell, they receive the S hemoglobin trait and from both parents, so the mom and the dad. And for my daughter, we did not, my husband and I did not know that we had the sickle cell trait and she did in fact inherit the SS hemoglobin type and so she has sickle cell disease. In 2008, the United Nations declared that June 19th would be World Sickle Cell Day. Why would the UN take a disease like sickle cell and make it a global issue? Because sickle cell disease is the most common genetic disorder in the world. It does not only affect black people, it can affect many people of many different ethnicities. Typically, in the past, we generally associate people who have lived in climates that have malaria as places where a sickle cell trait, the mutation of this gene can take place and cause a person to have the sickle cell trait and then cause them to reproduce with someone else who has it and create a baby who also has, who has the sickle cell disease. And so it's just important for people to be aware of their trait status and You can do that by getting a blood test. They can actually identify whether or not a person has sickle cell trait. Although people of any ethnicity can get sickle cell, you're born with it. So it's not something that is contagious. You can't catch it from anybody. You literally have to inherit it. So... It is important to note that there are more than one type of sickle cell disease and because there are different types of hemoglobin. And so they are all blood disorders and sickle cell disease is prevalent mostly in black people. And it's not the only people who can get it, but there is a large number of black people who can get it, who, who do have it. In the United States, one in 12 people of African descent have the sickle cell trait. And it is estimated that one in 365 births in the United States, is, uh, a baby is born with sickle cell disease. So it is a conversation that we should have and talk about and not just think it's something that other people have. Oh, that's them. No, it can happen to any of us. And so it's important to be aware, to know, and to advocate. So even if it's not something that affects you personally, 
you can advocate, you can raise awareness, you can tell someone else about it. And why is that important? It's important because we need more funding for sickle cell disease. Parents shouldn't be losing their children to this disease. Globally, there are children all over the world who are still dying because they have sickle cell disease. When I first became a blogger in 2010, I remember sharing my story about raising a child with sickle cell disease. And I remember getting a message from someone in Africa and they told me, I don't remember what country they were from, but they told me that there were people who discarded children who had sickle cell and many of them were alone and thrown in the street and left to die because they were considered defective and cursed. But I know that as a parent of a child with sickle cell disease, my child is not cursed. And I know that I've learned so much information to keep her healthy and to help her live a better quality of life. And that's what I fight for every day. So that is why I blog. That is why I share our story. That is why I try to help educate other people because the most amazing and brilliant people often, many of them have sickle cell disease and it doesn't affect their intellect. It can make their lives a lot, lives a lot harder. And we know that people who have sickle cell disease often suffer from what is called pain crisis. When the hemoglobin, the red blood cells, they start to stick together and they become sticky and they don't flow properly. And the person really goes through an extreme amount of pain and it's debilitating. So we want funding and research to really help to lessen that. We want a universal cure. Right now there is a cure that exists and that is for a person to receive a bone marrow transplant or a stem cell transplant. They often have to, for a bone marrow transplant, they often have to find a very close donor match. For some people who receive the bone marrow transplant, all bone marrow transplants aren't always successful. And so that's something to understand that that particular cure isn't a cure for everybody. That's why we are still fighting for a more universal cure. So you know, there are, they try to find a very close match, but often, and sometimes people who have the sickle cell trait, they don't want to reproduce again because they don't want to run the risk of having another child with sickle cell disease. Sometimes they do, um, but you know, that's not what we're talking about today. And I think that's up to each person's choice and decision. I know that uh, my family, we chose not to reproduce again. We have, um, I have a set of twins. So one has sickle cell disease and one does not. And so because of that, you know, there are some families who want to have an exact sibling match and that could take several children to, to find that. And so it's, it's hard. And so they're looking for new ways to come up with a cure, which I am definitely grateful. And I hope that within my lifetime, we will find a cure. We will hear about a cure. And I would love, you know, in my, one of my dreams and one of my, my hopes is that, you know, if a cure that was safe and effective was available for my daughter, I would love for her to be cured. And I have met people who were cured and it's, it's remarkable. So 
What I want to tell you on World Sickle Cell Day is that you can make a difference by talking to someone else about sickle cell disease. You can donate blood. You can give to a sickle cell foundation and you can also buy my coloring book. So I actually created a coloring book for children who are growing up with sickle cell disease. My coloring book is called The Sickle Cell Coloring Book for Kids. So that title is very easy to remember. You can find it on Amazon or you can visit the show notes to find out more. And it really goes through from A to Z how a person can really help their child grow up and be healthy living with sickle cell disease. And so I, I thank you and I appreciate you for listening to this podcast. And I encourage you to learn more about how sickle cell disease affects communities all over the world. That would be a great science project for your kids or for you. And um, one other organization that you can donate to that has made a huge difference in different families' lives that affect sickle cell disease, and that is St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. In 2014, I became a St. Jude Children's Research Hospital ambassador. So I'm one of their blogging ambassadors. And what I try to do is raise awareness about what they have done. The very first grant that St. Jude received was for sickle cell disease. And Danny Thomas, when he founded the hospital, he was very intentional about wanting black children to receive the same expert care as white children and to grow up and have a very healthy life. So they were at the forefront of civil rights for black families and health care. So when we're out fighting for equality, we also need to fight for equality in health care as well. So I just encourage you to educate yourselves, learn more, do research, and thank you for listening to the Cleverly Changing podcast. If you have questions about anything we talked about on today's show, please let me know. And you can do that by sending me a DM or a comment on one of our pages. That's Cleverly Changing on Instagram and on Facebook. Or you can send me an email at cleverlychanging at gmail.com. And we just encourage you, if you have new show topics, please let us know. If you've been enjoying this podcast, tell a friend. Don't keep all the goodness to yourself. Tell a friend, tell someone else about it and encourage them to listen and watch. If you would like to be a guest, you can contact me as well. If you go to the uh, show notes page, there should be an opportunity for you to also sign up to be a guest on our show. So we wish you well and we hope that you guys are surviving and staying strong and healthy and staying safe. So thanks for listening.